today's episode, we are gonna be trying to attempt to do some high-end fall DIYs using Dollar Tree products. I'm really happy with the results, so let's get started on our first DIY. which is a jack-o'-lantern or pumpkin crate using all Dollar Tree stuff. So this is really fun. So I had it in my mind that I really wanted to do a pumpkin crate. So I went in and as you know, if you've been in there, there's a huge variety of different types of wood pumpkins right now, but I wanted it to be one of their larger ones. And I did want it to have a little bit of dimension. So in my original plan, I was just gonna do plain because that's a little bit more diverse for the fall season and you can use it a little bit longer. But when I saw these little jack-o'-lanterns, I'm like, it would be really kind of fun to have some kind of dimension on the ends of our crate. But whatever you do, you're gonna want at least four of the pumpkins all of the same. You might even want to go with six, depending on what thickness you want. So the first thing you're gonna do is you are gonna leave two of them alone, leave the jack-o'-lantern face on. The next thing you're gonna do is take something flat, like a spatula, or something and scrape off all of the other jack-o'-lantern pieces and if you're very careful you might be able to save these and set them aside for another project some of them kind of got sacrificed to the the cause but some of them worked out just great so i have little extra jack-o'-lantern pieces for another project then you're gonna stack them with some wood glue and then you're gonna take some pinching clamps it, nothing crazy here and we are going to clamp them together so you have two end pieces essentially that are two thick. Going back, I might even stack it three thick and make it a little bit thicker, but in the end it did work out and we're fine. One of the new products that I've noticed at the Dollar Tree are all of these um, wood slats. You've got the long skinny ones and then you've got some shorter rectangular ones that are a little bit wider, but these are nice substantial wood pieces that are blank. I wanted something that would look like a substantial piece of decor. So these wood slats are perfect for that. So after my wood pumpkins were dry, I took out our base piece, which is a, a new like plaque piece. I don't even know what the exact dimensions of it are, but you'll see them at the stores. They're really cool. And that was going to be our base piece. And so I put a little bit of wood glue on the end of that and shot about three or four brad nails into the either side to kind of create our end caps of our crate pumpkin. And I was like, we're forming a crate. This is gonna work. <laughs> then I had the longer, skinnier slats and they were too long and they did not match up with the base dimension. So I made our marks of where we needed to cut those and we had four of those and I cut off those. And don't forget to keep those little extras because you can turn those into something really cool. I keep all of my little extras because you never know when you're gonna need something like on our next project. We're gonna be using a little scrap wood. But hang on for that. Anyways, so once we got those down, this is a little tricky part because the the crate is round. It's like, where do you put the slats? And you're kind of eyeballing it. It's going to take a little fudging. I kind of just made some measurements of where I wanted it to be. And really the important part is trying to get it even on the outside and level. And so just making some marks and then taking some wood glue on either side of that and then shooting in some brad nails. Um, from that side. Be careful to keep your fingers away from where the nails could go through because you might miss it a couple of times, which I did. I'm just gonna give you all permission to have that happen. It's okay, I promise. So once you finally get that figured out, you let it dry and you've got a cute crate. So then you'll just take some wood filler and go back in and fill in those holes and just very subtly and it'll be great and it will look good. So you could leave it like this, natural, unfinished. All of the wood matches pretty good. You could paint it. What I chose to do is take some antiquing glaze and cover the entire thing with antiquing glaze. It gives it a stained effect 
product and it dries very quickly. So that's why I went with that. And then once it was dry, I went back in to add a little dimension and character. I sanded out some of the edges and it was really, really rustic. And that was it. Now, here's a little funny side note. So I had to run some errands and get a couple of things at Walmart and I, <laughs> <laughs> took the crate in with me because I'm like rather than make an arrangement maybe they'll have something there that'll fit in there and it will look cute so I took it in there and by the way I did find a really cute arrangement if I can find the link for it I will include it in the description box below because I did find the perfect arrangement that fits in there really great but I when I went to check out <laughs> <laughs> this is the funny part. I was getting ready to leave. Then they came up to me and they're like, you forgot to ring up the crate. <laughs> so I was like, I made this. So apparently it's good enough to sell in the store. So there you go. Coming to a Walmart near you soon. <laughs> They're gonna have to pay me though, right? <laughs> but isn't this so cute? I think this would make a really cute table centerpiece. You can put it on your shelf. I love the personality of the Jack Lantern, but you could do something more neutral, like I said, on the sides so that it can last you into the Thanksgiving season a little bit better. But I love how this turned out. This looks super, super high end and pretty much everything was from the Dollar Tree. So there you go. Good enough to sell in a Walmart, at least. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Oh my word, this next Dollar Tree DIY, I love how it turned out. It's so cute. I cannot wait to tell you how we put this together. The first thing was, as I had it in my mind to make this witch's broom, I think I saw something similar at um, Home Goods. It was like $60. And I'm like, we can make that for so much cheaper. So, I found this walking stick on our thrifting adventure from last week's episode. It was $14, but it was marked 50% off. So it was $7 and it was really tall. And to me, I looked at it and I saw a witch's broomstick. Now this part, you don't have to pay $7 for. You can go scouting out in your yard or in forage your own branch for this project and potentially have it totally free. That's what I would probably recommend, except for unless you run into a thrift store and find the perfect thing right in front of you, like, oh, <laughs> I have to get that. That worked out for me. The first thing that I ended up doing is making some directional signs to put on our witch's broomstick. And I designed all of these images and I will provide them to you for free. In the description box, there will be a link. It will be super easy. You just click on it. And and all of my images that I have uploaded, I'm still working on getting them all up there. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm so busy. But we're trying to get all of the old library over there and make it super easy for you. But these stencils will be free so you can cut them out on your machine or print them out and do an image transfer technique, whatever works best for you. So I made some stencils on my Cricut machine. Then of course I weeded it and I put the transfer tape on and then I peeled off the back and got it onto our wood plaques and there's three of them. Them. And then what I took is this wood burning marker, which I love is so easy. Yes, there's some DIY recipes out there, but for me, the convenience of this is so nice to just put it, fill it in with a marker. And so I did that on all three of them. And then you peel back the stencil. Then you take out your wood burning tool. It's like a heating gun. <laughs> and we burn the image into the wood. Now you could do vinyl, but I really thought on a witch's broom, burning seemed appropriate for whatever reason. And then I found this random stain on a clearance shelf at Walmart and I thought I'd give it a try. I had no idea what the color would look like, but I thought it was worth it <laughs> to give it a whirl. So I put on the stain and what I did notice is when I stained it, first of all, it ended up being a little darker than I had originally anticipated. And it was fine. I mean, it, it worked out okay. But also it kind of took off some of the wood burned image, but I do have a fix for that. So stay tuned. So with that stained, I let that dry fully and it was a quick drying stain thankfully, because a lot of times stains take a while to dry. While that was drying, we needed to build a base for this witch's broom if it was gonna stand up. So I found scrap wood in my pile, two like one by threes that I thought we could make work as a base. So what I did is I cut one of those pieces in half and stuck them on either side. And then I made sure that all of the dimensions for where we're making like an X space 
were the same on either side, which ended up being 15 and a half inches for your reference. And then like, I think the two little side pieces were six and three quarters or whatever it ends up adding up to be 15 and a half. And then I broke out our Craig jig. When I first started using the Craig jig, I'm going to be honest with you, I was a little intimidated by it. I didn't kind of understand really how it worked, but it was really a lot easier than I thought. You just line it up with the edge of the wood that you want to put it into, clamp the little device down onto that wood, take the special bit that they provide and drill it into the wood and I did two of those on each um, little shorter piece. Now I'll provide the link for the Craig jig in the description box so don't worry about that but then you need to get special Craig screws. <laughs> I don't remember what the length is. I think they're like an inch and a half maybe an inch and a quarter. You take the screws that you can get that go with it. <laughs> And it has a special drill bit that you also need with those screws. Then you clamp it all into place, finding right and center. Make sure it's nice and tight and flat because you, you don't want the heights to be uh, off kilter. So you want to make sure when you clamp it that the two wood pieces are nice and even together. And then you run the screws into each pilot hole and there you go. You do that on both sides and you have this X base. And then once that was built, I stained it to match the signs and so that there would be a nice cohesive look to it. And so let that dry as well. Once everything was all dry, I drilled a hole in the center of our base, but before we could attach it to my walking stick, it was a little curved on the bottom, so I just took my miter saw, just cut off a little tiny bit on the end piece there, and so it would be nice and flush when we attached it. And then I pre-drilled a hole in the bottom of the walking stick, pre-drilled a hole in our little X base and shot up a two and a half inch screw into the base of our witch's broom. <laughs> so then we needed like the witch's broom part, like the, the bottom, <laughs> the sweeping part. I wanted this to be on the top of the room, but just know that you could flip this around and put it on the bottom and then it would disguise the base and everything. But in my mind, when I envisioned it, it needed to be up top. And so I originally thought about using the hula skirt from the Dollar Tree. You definitely could use it, but you would need like a lot of those to get the fullness and I felt like they were gonna be a little bit flimsier so I just bought a big bag of raffia at Walmart for I believe it was around five dollars and that's what I used and I pulled out a few strands and set those aside for later but then I pretty much took the entirety of the raffia folded it in half cut it in half and then folded that in half again and created two bunches, one for the front, one for the back and folded that on. Then I took some tan packing tape and just wrapped that around where I thought the base of the broom should be. And that was more to just kind of hold it in place <laughs> while I was kind of hiding some of the mechanics of things or getting it worked out. And then um, I took the raffia that I had set aside and wrapped that around and tied that in a knot to cover up that packing tape. So here we go. I had my broom in my mind and this didn't really go according to plan. Just going to caveat that right up front. I thought that if I sprayed it with enough uh, like lacquer that it would stiffen up that raffia and keep it nice and tall. <laughs> I used almost a whole can and while it did stiffen it up some, I, I think it was like a, a vain effort. So what I ended up doing as a solution to that is taking some fishing wire and very strategically tying it in a couple of areas to hold the broom into the end position. But I, like I said, you could put it on the bottom and you wouldn't even have that problem at all because you wouldn't be fighting gravity and it would just go down and cover the base. But like I said, I wanted the broomstick up. <laughs> so it is what it is. And I just went with it. And I, honestly, I am thrilled with the end result. But before I show you the end result, here's what we did to fix the wood burning that kind of lightened up is I just went with the heating gun again over the top of that and burned it right back in and it did darken up the lettering once more so it looked a lot better and then just to finish it off make it rustic 
the whole thing kind of looked rustic anyways then i just sanded down some of the edges of the sign and that was it but isn't this such a cute piece of decor so mine ended up being 15 dollars because i spent seven dollars on the walking stick but if you were to do this and just find your own walking stick you could do it for eight dollars and this is like a easily a sixty dollar look with stuff from the Dollar Tree, a walking stick, and some raffia from Walmart. But again, you could use the Dollar Tree hula skirts. I just think that it's a better deal to get the stuff at Walmart, honestly. So really, really cute, right? I don't know. What do you think of this? I just absolutely love it. think it's super, super adorable. What do you think? Okay, coming in a few short weeks, I'm going to be making some really big announcements. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button because I don't want you to miss out. Like I'm not exaggerating. There's some big stuff coming and I cannot wait to share it with you. I'm dying to share it with you, but not quite yet. In the meantime, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out when I make that huge announcement. Right now, Dollar Tree is selling a whole assortment of pretty large scale door tags or wall tags, whatever, however you refer to them. I knew I wanted to do something with them. As is, they kind of look like something printed and stuck to the front. They're cute, but I think we can make it look a lot more high end. So the first thing I set out to do was painting the entire thing black and getting a nice neutral base. And then I got this pumpkin mold and I think it's meant for making muffins and I filled it up with hot glue and used it as a mold and I didn't fill it all the way up but probably around a quarter of an inch thick and I also made sure to do the stem which was up a little bit higher and so it was separated and then I let that fully cool then we removed it from the mold and trimmed off any excess with scissors and that was super easy to do and then i took some hot glue and glued it right into the center of our tag and then made sure everything looked good and then i did another coat of black chalk paint over the top of it so then it kind of disappears a little bit um, but that's no matter we go back in and i do a little bit of distressing around the edges make sure that the the edges of the tag were smooth they were a little bit rough so i just took a, some sandpaper to that and then i decided it needed a little bit more drama to it so i took some autumn gold rub and buff and just kind of hit all of the edges with that and i really decided to accentuate the pumpkin with this and so that would add a lot of drama and dimension to that and then I added a washer that I also added um, some autumn gold rub and buff to and let that dry and while everything was drying then I went about making a wreath for this so this is a wreath that I got on the Target dollar spot clearance last season so it still has some autumn colors to it and then I also took some cheetah print pumpkins that I got from Hobby Lobby on 50% off it was in a large bag and I only used three of them then I used some hydrangeas and these little um, orange pomegranates, or I've heard some people call them rose hips. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I just kind of put, assembled a little wreath out of all of these things. And I thought this was super fun, super cute. And then we needed to attach our wreath to the tag. So I took a push pin and it was, I took a little bit of elbow grease, I'm not gonna lie, and I pushed that through the tag. Now a little bit of it poked out on the back side, so I took some wire cutters and clipped off the back and it still poked out a little bit. So I just took a little dollop of hot glue and put that on the back and let that cool. Then on the front side, I took some fishing line and tied that to the push pin and then tied our wreath on with that. Then I took some black and white striped ribbon that I had and made a little hang hanger out of that and just looped that through the hole and tied a knot and that was it. I think it's super cute. I think the green and all of the other colors really make it pop and the black just is a nice good backdrop and I think that it looks great. I really 
really like this project, it's super cute. What do you think? This next DIY, I was inspired by something that I saw at Hobby Lobby and it was like a stack of pumpkins. They had one that was unfinished and they had one that was pr like a tin one and then they had one with dots around it. And this is what it looked like. And I was like, that's really cute. I bet we can make a little bit larger version out of Dollar Tree th things. And that's what I set out to do. Okay, so where I started on this was I took one of the Dollar Tree pumpkins that have like the burlap on it and a little decorative thing. And I peeled all of that off. And then I took my little scraper tool, my spatula and scraped off all the glitter. And then of course I cleaned up and the, <laughs> the DIY dolly wants to come help me narrate. She probably wants to play with her little witch toy that I just got her. What do you want? Do you want to play? Mm -hmm. You can chew on that though. And then it was prepped. And then I just traced out the shape of that onto the peel and stick pressed tin tiles that they have at Dollar Tree. I've used that. I did. A, I dedicated a whole episode to these pressed tin projects. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it below. But it's so easy to do. Then you just take some scissors and cut out what you traced on. Then I take some Mod Podge, which I think is a good um, way to adhere it and stuck it and let it dry. Then I moved on to the next one, which I peeled off from one of those friends football family pumpkins. I peeled one of those off and I flipped it over to the back side. And then I had these wood beads that I traced the exterior with. I had them in my stash. Honestly, I would recommend going with a little bit smaller bead. I felt like these beads were just a hair too big. Um, you might even want to go ahead and try some of those pearly um, sticker strands that you can get from the Dollar Tree. But I had the wood ones and so I went with that and I just hot glued them on the outside. And then I took them outside and spray painted them in a flat white spray paint and, and got good coverage and let that fully dry. Before we attach everything, I just took some sandpaper and scuffed it up to give it that rustic look from the inspiration one. And now we're going to kind of assemble the whole thing together. And what I did here is I took another one of those ones with the little stands on it and, a, and removed what was in there and took that part because we're going to need it in assembling this all together. So then we're going to attach our large natural pumpkin and I just decided to leave that natural and we're going to hot glue the pressed tin one to it. We're going to hot glue our one with the wood beads to it and we're going to attach them all. And then all it was was just a little bit of embellishment by way of some baker's twine and some hot glue, a little bit of greenery and then you have this really cute neutral fall decor that I thought would be super super cute. It was very affordable to put together and I like the way it looks. Like I said I might do a smaller beads and that might be the only thing that I change but I think it looks super adorable and I hope you do too. I know you've probably seen those beautiful velvet pumpkins at the Dollar Tree. I am really digging them. They've got some really beautiful colors and I think they're really high end looking as is, but I wanted to kind of up the ante a little bit and this is so easy to do. So what I did is I bought three of them in the blue color because I thought that, that could work. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was a pretty color because of like some of the decor that I had going on. I took some rub and buff and did a pewter color on the stem. Now, honestly, I think if I were to do it again, I might have picked a different color, maybe a gold or more of a bronzy color to just up the Annie, but taking a little rub and buff on that stem to just up it a little bit and elevate it a little bit. I think that that it is good, but you could omit that step. And then they have these beautiful blue fall leaves as well on that bush of blue leaves. There's like some large ones and then there's some like smaller ones. And then we're going to take those leaves and we're going to take the larger leaf and we're going to hot glue that on the side. And then we're going to take the smaller leaf and then hot glue that on the same side but a little bit in front of it and let that dry. 
Then I had these little pearly buttons left over from another project. I had several of them, but I took three of them and hot glued that kind of up next to the base of the stem and I just loved it. Now I decided to display it on this wood piece that I found on my thrifting trip. I haven't done anything to the wood piece yet, um, but I just thought they, there's three pumpkins, three on this tray. This will look really, really cute and it does. I really, really love how that turned out. Took minutes to do this upgrade and it's just the little touches sometimes that really elevate a piece and I think that it works. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed these Dollar Tree fall DIYs. I had a couple of really big favorites. Obviously the pumpkin crate and the witch's broom love 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 those so i hope you loved them too if you enjoyed this episode here's another one that i think you'll like as well and if you haven't done so already consider hitting that subscribe button right there it's super easy to do and i would love it if you joined the diy niner family and to all of my diy niners i just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful than you know we'll see you next time bye